These are the five best performing decks in Historic right now. Whether you're looking for a new deck to craft or you just want a better idea of the decks you might face, this is the video for you. Coming in fifth, we have Selesnia Enchantress, which aims to lock out creature decks and draw an absurd number of cards versus non-creature decks, all fueled by enchantments. The deck has a core creature package of Sanctum Weaver, which produces lots of mana, Destiny Spinner, which makes your enchantments uncounterable, and Siphis Harvest's Hand, which draws you a card every time you play an enchantment. Alongside Siphis, you also have Enchantress's Presence drawing you cards the same way. You then have Nine Lives and Solemnity, which combine to prevent all damage dealt, which in some matchups is an instant win, and in other matchups, it's enough to slow them down while you get card advantage. Sterling Grove can be used to protect these enchantments, but equally used to tutor for this combo. It also tutors for other niche cards dependent on matchup. For example, Leyline of Sanctity and Rest in Peace. It can also help you find Sigil of the Empty Throne, which is a main win condition in the deck, alongside Approach of the Second Sun, both of which close out games quickly when you need to. Banishing Light and Borrowed Time are the last components of the deck. They're the removal which remove key components of your opponent's deck, buying you enough time to win, or at the very least, set up nine lives. The strength of this deck comes from how many cards you draw and being able to tutor with Sterling Grove. This enables you to consistently find the niche one-offs that are in your deck that can single-handedly win you games in certain matchups. This deck's weakness is matchups where nine lives is much less powerful. Think about Mill, or even Approach of the Second Sunrise decks. The fourth best performing deck is Azurius Auras, which focuses on drawing lots of cards and creating big evasive creatures. The deck uses creatures such as Core Spirit Dancer and Sram Senior Edificer to draw lots of cards, whilst also using creatures like Hushbringer and Selfless Saviour to either slow down your opponent's creatures or to protect your own. It's also worth noting that Lurus is the companion for this deck, which can be used as a great recovery card in the later stages of the game once you run out of gas. The deck runs an assortment of auras, some of which focus on drawing you more cards, other auras help to make your creatures evasive, and some auras are there to help grow your creatures power and toughness. This deck is very good at being explosive and closing games out fast. However, this deck is also fantastic at drawing cards, which helps it to hold up in the mid to late game too. The biggest weakness of this deck is spot removal. If your opponent destroys your large creature, you're kinda screwed. But this is where Selfless Savior and Lurus help to either protect or recover you from these weak spots. Before we move on to the next deck, I just wanted to remind you that you can subscribe to the channel if you'd like to stay up to date with all of our weekly meta updates. In third place, we have Esper Reanimator, which is a deck that likes to fill its grave with big creatures and bring them back to life for much less mana. The deck uses spells like Unburial Rites, Late to Dinner, and Priest of Fell Rites to return large creatures to the battlefield from your graveyard. The deck has a variety of praetors to target, all of which are better or worse dependent on the deck you're facing. You can also include Massacre Worm and Serra's Emissary in the deck as two more important targets. The deck uses cards to mill yourself, which is very important in order to have reanimation targets in your graveyard. If you do draw your targets, don't worry too much. Cards like Bone Shards and Faithful Mending can be used to discard your large creatures. And even super late game, you might just hard cast the creatures. The strength of this deck is having a variety of powerful creatures to choose from. Elish Norn and Massacre Worm can clear boards in certain matchups. Whereas Jinkataxis can straight up win you the game if you make a control deck discard their entire hand. It's vital you find the key creatures for the deck you're facing and reanimate it when you can. The obvious weakness of this deck is Graveyard Hate. In Best of Ones or pre sideboard this is less common. However, some decks do include it in the main deck. We even include it in our list with Ashiok. It's very important you use cards like Fort Seas to prevent your opponents from removing your graveyard and stopping you from winning the game. In second place, we have a deck as old as magic itself, Red Deck Wins. 
This is a brutal aggro deck that has one game plan. Play creatures and turn them sideways. The deck wants to start the game with fast one drops Fanatical Firebrand and Reckless Ringleader, both of which have haste. Followed up with powerful two drops which either refresh your mana, gain you card advantage, or just have excellent rates. The three drops then begin with Goblin Chain Roller, which is positioned excellently in the current meta. There's also Rampaging Ferocidon, and then there's Bone Crusher Giant that offers rates that are, well, even good enough for modern. Finishing the curve, we have Torbrun, Thane of Red Fell. Four mana is usually considered too greedy in mono red decks, however, this card can single handedly win you the game the turn you play it, making it worth the cost. That is massive. Outside of creatures, there is Roiling Vortex, which can also count as life gain and starts a one damage a turn clock, which can be very important in certain matchups. Think of control. It's also important to mention the lands. Den of the Bugbear is a fantastic man land which offers a lot of pressure, and Ramanap Ruins, which is used as a finisher in the final couple of turns. The strength of this deck is its consistency and the fact it has an obvious game plan to follow every game. You always know what you need to do. Smack them in the face, it's that simple. A weakness of this deck is big beefy blockers that can eat your smaller creatures and board wipes and life game. Though thankfully cards like Rampaging Ferocidon and Roiling Vortex can help us versus this at least. They used to live in the sideboard in a lot of decks but now we have the main deck. Before we share the best performing deck with you, please remember you can like the video down below but only do it if you found the video useful so far. And as the best deck in Historic right now, we have Celestia Squirrel Combo, which is an aggro combo deck. Yes, you heard me correctly, aggro and combo. This deck uses powerful creatures, Trellisara, Moondancer, and Voice of the Blessed as large beat sticks that grow from the life gain from creatures like Soul Warden, Prosperous Innkeeper, and Lunark Veteran. This pressure helps you to buy time to complete your combo. That is if they don't just win you the game already. So the combo works like this. You have a Soul Warden or any of the other alternatives, a Heliod, the Sun Crowned. Then you play Scurry the Oak. This gains you life, which then gives you a counter from Heliod. You then place the counter on Scurry, which then gives you another Squirrel. Repeat this process to gain as much life as you wish, an army of Squirrels, all led by one really big squirrel, Scurry. I know, it sounds ridiculous, but the deck really is great. The real strength of this deck is versatility and resilience. You can shift your game plan dependent on the matchup. Versus aggro decks, you can lean in on the life gain and try to race with big creatures. Whereas versus mid-range decks, it might work a little bit better to lean into your combo. Sometimes you just naturally get the combo by accident, which is always great. One weakness this deck has is disruption. Whether it's counter spells, removals, or the worst of all, discard from cards like Fault Seas and Inquisition of Kozilek. Because you have two game plans, your opponent can find it easier to stop whichever one you choose to follow. And that's been the top five best performing historic decks over the past week. If you've liked any of these decks, you can find links to all of them in the description below, where you can also export them directly to Arena. If you found the video useful, please do give us a like, we really appreciate it. And if you'd like to stay up to date with more videos like this, you can subscribe to our channel. We release these meta reports every single week. Also, if you'd like to know more about any of the decks featured in this video, make sure you leave a comment down below to let us know. We'll then make a more detailed deck tech video for whichever deck you will want to see the most. See you next week and have a good day. Bye.